In order for Android's accessibility services to work properly, labels need to be both precise and concise. If a graphical element on the screen doesn't have a content description, it can be difficult for users of accessibility services to navigate and use your app. In this example, we'll see how TalkBack navigates an app and how proper content descriptions can improve the user's experience. Let's briefly recap how a blind or low vision user interacts with their device using a screen reader such as TalkBack. When using TalkBack, users discover content by moving their fingers across the device screen. TalkBack announces the views and the user interacts with those views using gestures. Now let's see TalkBack in action by navigating to the settings screen with TalkBack enabled. We can see that when the user navigates to the file above button, TalkBack announces the text and the user can clearly understand the purpose of the button. Now let's try navigating a different screen with TalkBack enabled. Here we are in a screen of tasks and there's a floating action button on the bottom right. In this example, the floating action button only contains an icon and no text. Without providing a content label for the button, TalkBack can't announce the intent of this button. As we saw in the previous example with the file bug button, text rendered in text views or its subclasses is automatically provided to accessibility services. So there's no need to provide content labels. However, it's important to provide content labels for image views, image buttons, or any other view that convey meaningful or actionable information through graphics. Take this image view, for example. This image view is an add icon and when tapped, should take the user to a new screen to add a task. Since this view is associated with an action, we should indicate what the view does when it's tapped. Keep in mind that labels should be both precise and concise. So instead of labeling this button as add, we labeled it as add task. Add task is still a brief description, but helps provide the extra context for what exactly this button does. In general, if an image has meaningful content, we should provide a content description. If an image does not contain meaningful information, such as an action it performs, you can specify so with the attribute content description equals null. This attribute can be useful for elements such as decorative images or section dividers. Now that you have a better idea of when to use content descriptions, let's talk about how to best formulate content descriptions. First, always use a localized string by utilizing string resources. This allows the string to be translated to the user's locale. Second, keep labels concise. Unnecessarily verbose descriptions can actually degrade the experience for blind and low vision users. Third, don't include the control type, such as button. A screen reader like TalkBack will generally announce that on its own. Fourth, don't include interaction modes. For example, click to add task. Not everyone interacts with the device the same way. And there are multiple accessibility services besides TalkBack that the user may be using to interact with the app. Fifth, don't include states such as on or off. State description is already built into views, and we'll be covering proper state communication in a future episode. With these best practices in mind, the next step is to test your content descriptions in action. The best way to test whether your app has precise and concise labels for each element is by manually navigating through your app with an accessibility service such as TalkBack. And we'll be covering TalkBack in detail in a future episode. In summary, be sure meaningful non-text views have a content description so that accessibility service users can properly navigate and use your app. Second, put some thought into your content descriptions to make them both precise and concise. And third, always try using your app with a service such as TalkBack to better understand the user experience. In our next episode, We'll take a look at labeling other views in your Android app.